So welcome to another Focus on a Feature Online tutorial using the Integrated Genome Browser, or IGBY. I'm Dr. Nolan Fries, and I will once again be your guide to today's tutorial. Now, during the last Focus on a Feature, we talked about using IGBY to visualize alternative splicing between RNA-seq samples and how we could go about validating those observations using PCR with the aid of IGBY. Today, I thought we could take a step back and look at how we were able to get that RNA-seq data in the first place. So today, today I want to cover how to find a freely available RNA-seq data set. We will then groom, quality check, and trim that data as necessary. Then we're going to use a program called Top Hat to, do, uh, to align the data to a genome. And then finally, we will visualize the data in IGBY and look at a few data analysis tools. So the main key with the approach we are taking today is that it requires no programming. Everything will be done through a website called Galaxy. Galaxy is an open web-based platform for biomedical research. Many of Galaxy's functions require no programming experience and can all be done through its web browser. So all analyses are saved as a history. Any workflow you do can be repeated if necessary. So this is a really helpful tool. Uh, for more information about Galaxy, please visit their wiki. So in order for us to carry out our analysis in Galaxy, we will be going to usegalaxy.org. So we send you those in the chat box. So this is Galaxy's main page, and it's kind of split into three main panels. And those are the tools panel, the primary panel here, which is going to be where we do most of our analyses, and then our history panel. So everything that we do will show up here as a history, and from here we can download uh, whatever data sets we put in or whatever uh, analyses we pull out. We can also change the format of that data and the name of that data. So for today's example scenario, I thought we could look at mining publicly available data and then carry out our own analysis within Galaxy. Alternatively, once we have this raw data, the workflow I'll demonstrate will actually be exactly the same if you had carried out your own experiment using RNA-seq and had just received those raw sequence data files. So a good place to start searching for publicly available sequence data would be the NCBI Sequence Read Archive, or SRA. So the Sequence Read Archive is a repository for raw sequence uh, data, especially from next-gen sequencing files. So if you've done your own experiment and you're planning on publishing data, a lot of times you'll have to upload that raw data to the SRA website. So for today's example, I thought we could do something near and dear to my heart. And so I was going to look at an RNA-seq experiment in Rice where they did a salt stress so I'm just going to type in salt, rice, and RNA-seq. So we get three results for this, and that's perfectly good. I'm just going to click on this first one. And so we get a lot of data here. I'm just going to expand some of these. So this was done in rice, 14 days. These were seedlings, and this particular sample was salt stress. So that's exactly what I want. And if you need more information, obviously, there's a, kind of a, a more detailed methods here. Um, but all we need from this is this accession number right here. So I'm just going to copy that. And then we can go back to Galaxy. And I've started an unnamed history. So this is just a blank history. We can go over to the tools, and we're going to go to the get data. So the first thing we need to do is get our data into Galaxy. So we want to get those, those sequence files in there. And in order to get the SRA sequence files in there, we can go to this EBI. This is the European Bioinformatics Institute's SRA website. And this is linked directly through Galaxy. And so it'll allow us to import directly from their website uh, these data files. So I'll just go ahead and paste in that accession number, do a search. So we get that same exact experiment, kind of get some more information here. So this is an Illumina run, and it's paired end sequencing. That's important. We'll need to know that for later. And this is our, our RICE RNA-seq experiment. In order to import this, we'll go down to the bottom here, 
where it says FastQ Files Galaxy, we can go ahead and click on File 1. Now you'll see that there's two files, and that refers to the paired end sequencing. So we'll actually need both of these files. So I'll go ahead and click on the first one, and you'll see that it appears here in the history. Now it'll appear as gray to begin with because it hasn't started to download this yet. Once it's started to download, it'll turn yellow. And then once it's finished, it will turn green. For now, let's go get that second data file. Just paste that back in there. Okay, so we're now importing both the um, paired and read sequence files into Galaxy. So, okay, one of them just started. Now, before we can start with our initial analysis, I want to import one more file, and that's actually the rice uh, sequence file. Now, Galaxy actually has access to the majority of the um, genome sequences available. However, in today's example, I found it was actually a little bit better to use uh, a rice genome file from msu.edu's website. This lines up exactly with what we provide through IGBY uh, for an annotation. So what we need to do for that is go to MSU's FTP site where they have access to their uh, sequence file. And so it's actually this all.con. And all I'm going to do here is copy that link address. I'm going to go back to Galaxy. I'm going to go to Get Data. And this time I'm going to go to Upload File from Your Computer. And here where it says URL text, I'm just going to paste in that URL to that FTP site. So this will allow me to import directly from their website, their FTP site, that sequence into Galaxy. Additionally, if you had your own custom genome, you could have that stored on your computer and then you could upload that directly into Galaxy. So we'll just go ahead and click Execute. Okay, so we're now importing three files, our two FASTQ files for our one sample, and our rice genome. Now, depending on the size of these files, this could take quite a while. This could take you know, anywhere from a few minutes to hours. So I've completed this, and so if we go up here to the top right, this history options, you're provided with many, many options in regards to your history. And what I've already done is carried this out, so I'm going to switch histories here. So now I'm working with a history where I've already imported and completed these files. So here's our rice genome file and our two FASTQ files. Why don't we take a look at these real quick? This is really easy and a really great feature of Galaxy is that you can come in and look directly at the data. Just click on this view data eye icon. Now this data set is very large, so we're only going to see a piece of it, it's just the first megabyte, but allows us to make sure that our data is in the format that we think it is without trying to open up the entire file. So this rice sequence file is just a FASTA file, and it is just the sequence read straight through by chromosome, which is exactly what we need, so that's perfectly fine. Now, the FASTQ files, so these are four-line files. So this would be kind of one sample, so to speak. This first line is going to be the name line. It's going to tell you information about the run itself, what kind of machine it was sequenced on. Uh, this two here actually refers to the paired end. So in this other sample, this would be a one. In this case, it's a two. The next line is the uh, are the base pairs themselves. The third line is kind of an optional line. In this case, it doesn't really hold any information, but you could find uh, additional information possibly about the name in this line. And then this fourth line is the sequence quality scores. And so these follow uh, just a simple ASCII. And I can tell you that this hash or pound sign is actually the lowest quality score that it can receive. So actually just looking through this file um, kind of blindly, we can immediately tell that a lot of our sequences seem to have really bad quality scores 
towards the end. So that could be important for our later analysis. Okay, so our files appear to be in correct format. However, in order to run them through Galaxy, it's a good idea to run those files through what's called a FastQ groomer. So this will ensure that the files are in the exact format that Galaxy requires for carrying out analysis. And this is especially important as Galaxy needs the FastQ quality scores in a specific format. And this format has changed over the last couple of years. So if you do have older data or you're looking at older data, then it's especially important to carry this step out. So in order to do that, we're going to go to back to our tools. I'm going to close this get data, and I'm going to go down to our NGS toolbox beta, and we're going to go to NGS, so next-gen sequencing, quality check, and manipulation. And we're going to look for a tool called FastQ Groomer. So this is going to convert between various FastQ quality formats. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. So we want to select our first file. So we'll go with this ERX um, paired in number one. Now I know from reading the paper and reading through the data that this file is in Sanger and Illumina 1.8 plus. However, you can see that there are other options. And if you don't know what your current FastQ quality scores uh, what, what format they're in, then you would need to find that out. And there are a couple different ways to do that. Either, you know, if, if, if this is already published work, then it should be stated somewhere, um, either within the SRA website or through in the paper. Alternatively, if it's your own data, you can go back to whoever sequenced it and they should be able to tell you. Otherwise, you can look at the FastQ file itself like we just did, and depending on that top line, how that's organized, that can sometimes tell you which um, version this is. And then the third option is to use a, a tool that we're going to use in just a moment called FastQC. And this is a quality check tool, but what it also does is it will tell you what format your FastQ quality scores are in. So we'll go ahead for now though. I know it's in 1.8 plus, so I'll go ahead and execute that. And then we need to make sure we do that for both of our paired end reads. So I'll go back and it should be number two. Click execute. And so you see this, this groomer starts right away. Now this groomer will also take quite a long time um, it's got to go through that entire FastQ file, which is about 10 gigabytes. So this is something that you know, you'll want to get started and then just let run for a while. And so while it's running, why don't we go ahead and run FastQC. Uh, so FastQC or Fast Quality Check, it can be found back in the Tools box, back in the QC and Manipulation. And we're going to look for FastQC. So FastQC will generate a report that's going to tell us about the quality of our FastQ data. And this is really important to do before we start doing our alignment or really any of our analysis. Because if there's something inherently wrong with, with our FastQ, our, you know, our sequence data, then we want to find that out uh, early and fast. And then potentially, you know, if this is our own data, get back to whoever did the sequencing and, and report the problem. Or if it's published, then you know, maybe there's something we can do to kind of clean up this data. And so I'm going to go ahead and run the FastQC, and I'm going to select the groomer data and execute. And what you'll see is that Galaxy allows you to queue up different analyses. So even though we haven't finished this groomer, we can already queue up this next analysis. And so as soon as this is finished, this analysis will start. And this is really great because you can set up kind of a whole pipeline for exactly what you want to do to um, a piece of data and then just let that run on Galaxy servers, you know, potentially overnight or however many hours it takes. So let me go do this to the other file. So it's Grimrun Data 9, so I need Grimrun Data 11. Just go ahead and execute that. Okay. So we have our groomers running, and the quality checks will start after that. So, of course, we don't want to sit here and wait for several hours for this to finish, so I've already completed this. So let's jump to another of my histories. And 
and here we can see I've, I've completed everything, everything's imported, and why don't we take a look at this FastQC and just see how it turned out. So the FastQC will generate an HTML file that you can view directly within Galaxy, and it's going to give you a lot of kind of basic results and uh, quality scores and whatnot. And we're not going to go into too much detail today over this, but there's a few things that I definitely want to touch on here that we can try and um, alleviate, let's say. So the first is, is per base sequence quality, and this is really important. So we had 120 bases per read, but we can see here that that base quality really dips off around 75 base pairs. And we kind of saw that when we looked at that FASTQ data. So this is obviously an issue. Um, you know, the, the, the data, we don't need the data to be perfect quality scores necessarily, but obviously if, if it's this bad, then we might want to just kind of cut off uh, all of the reads or all of the sequence after about 75 base pairs. Now going down, so this is another important one, the per base sequence content. So this is looking at kind of your ATCG ratios. And here we can see, you know, it, it's having an issue with this, but the data from here to here actually look okay. We don't really seem to have too much of a bias. But these first six base pairs, there seems to be a huge bias towards this kind of GC. And that's not actually uh, a problem necessarily. What it has more to do with is that um, the random hexamers that are used to, to get these reads kind of have a slight bias towards GC rich. So you'll see right at the six base pair, you still have that bias, but then by seven, it, it's completely gone. So this probably actually isn't an issue since the rest of this seems to be okay. And the same would go for this. And then the rest of this, we're gonna kind of skip through until, I thought this was a particularly good example for overrepresented sequences. So these are sequences that appear way more than, than they should by chance alone, or um, they're just, they're completely overrepresented. And so in this case, this top hit appears over 600,000 times um, and actually is over 2% of our total reads for this data. And that's, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a little ridiculous. So what that means is that there's, there's some kind of contamination in here um, or adapters involved with the sequencing or there's something going on. Um, so ideally you would want to have these removed or um, you know, filtered out somehow. But for today, what we can do just the most, in the most simple way would be to trim these off and then not worry about those overrepresented sequences. So let's jump back to our unfinished history. Okay, we're still running. That's going to take a while. Now, in order to trim those sequences, uh, Galaxy provides a lot of tools. So we can go back to the toolbox beta, go to the QCN manipulation. I'm going to go down here to the bottom and we'll use one called trim sequences. And this is a really simple tool. All it's going to do, uh, we can tell it we want to use our groomer data and we're going to keep the first base. So we'll start at base one, but then we only want to go to 75 base pairs. And then after that, just cut everything off. So go ahead and execute. And I'm going to do the same thing on our other data. So that was on data 66, so we'll do it on this. So we'll just do 75 as well. And this is kind of a brute force approach, obviously, but uh, I think it's a good demonstration of, of some of the more simple um, things you can do to kind of change your data. So once again, as soon as this groomer is done, then the FastQC and these trim suite sequence tools will start running. In the meantime, we can jump back to our saved history go back to the completed history. And what I thought we could look at would be the FastQC on the trim data and just to see how that changed it. And so what you can see is that now instead of ending at 120 base pairs, it ends at 75 base pairs. And you know we get the green check mark, so it, it, it's, it's good. Um, 
So none of our, our, our reads on average are well within kind of the, the range that they should be in. So good. So at this point, we've been able to import our data, set up our genome, we've groomed our data, we quality checked our data, and we actually will say we improved our data a little bit by trimming off those, those poor, um, the poor sequence at the end of the read. So now we're finally ready to actually do the alignment. So let's jump back to my incomplete history. And so in order to do the alignment, we're going to use a tool called Top Hat. So this can be found under the toolbox, under or the NGS toolbox, and it's NGS RNA Seq. Now Top Hat works by doing a, a chart read aligner. Uh, it actually uses Bowtie, which is a short read aligner, but Top Hat, and I'm going to use this Top Hat for Illumina. You'll see there are a couple other options, including the newer Top Hat 2. Um, but Top Hat allows for there to be splice junctions. So you remember we're using RNA-seq data, and when we align this to a genome, you know, some of those reads are going to be split where there are introns. So Top Hat is a great tool for this. Now, for some of our other kind of tools we've been using today, uh, you know, we just, we left for the most part, we had to put in the file and we left everything else uh, at the default values. But for Top Hat, we're going to need to specify some more uh, parameters. And I'll show you at the end of this why that's important. So first off, we need to select our file. We want to select our trim sequences. And then here's where, if you're using a well-known model organism that had a genome that was already completely set up, you could just use the built-in genome to align to. In our case, we've actually imported our own genome and we want Top Hat to align to that genome. So I'll go ahead and switch um, to the use a genome from history. And it's automatically selected our rice genome file, which is down here. And is this library mate paired? Now this is really important. Uh, because yes, our library is uh, paired end, so we're going to switch this to paired end. And then what we can do is put in that other file. So there's a lot of advantages to using paired end data. Um, basically what it's doing is that you know you have one fragment. And in single end sequencing, you're going to just sequence from one side. And you know if you have a fragment that's 400 base pairs, you might sequence 100 base pairs into it. And that's all the data you get. With paired end, we're going to sequence from both ends of that fragment. And what's really cool about that is we'll know the distance between those two sequences. And so what we can do then is we can change this mean inner distance between mate pairs. So when I the paper that describes this data said they searched or they selected fragments between 300 and 400 base pairs. And we know that our reads themselves are now 75 base pairs each. So what that means is the average distance between our mate pairs should be between 150 and 250 base pairs. So for this average distance, we'll just go ahead and say uh, 200. And then Lastly, what we need to do is change the from the default settings, and we need to view this full parameter list. And we're going to change this intron length. And the reason we're going to change this intron length is that Top Hat is really set up or kind of optimized for mammalian systems. And so this maximum intron length is set at about 500,000 base pairs, which is pretty long. Um, in plants and uh, specifically in rice, the average intron length is only about 400 base pairs or so. It's, it's much, much smaller by several magnitudes. So we'll go ahead and change this down to 3,000. It's just kind of an arbitrary number that I picked, um, but it seems to work quite well. And I think there are some other studies that have done the same thing. So this will be something that for whatever organism or, or model you're using, you'll want to either optimize this or you know find someone else who's done a study and figure out what was kind of the optimal uh, intron length that they used. Now that's the only option I'm going to change at th throughout Top Hat, but as you'll see, there are many other options that you can alter. And many of these can have a pretty significant impact on your, your generated data. But from here, 
we should be good. So let's go ahead and execute this. And you'll see we actually get four files that will come out of this. And so these are an insertions bed file. So this will just be a bed file that has uh, anywhere where Top Hat thinks there's an insertion. Similarly, there'll also be a deletions bed file. And then the third bed file will be the splice junctions. So that'll be wherever Top Hat had to break apart a read. Um, and so that, that would be indicative of an intron. And then the final file, which is the one we're most interested in, is a BAM file. So this is a binary alignment file, and this is of the accepted hits. And so this will be all of our, our reads that aligned um, and what we'll be able to really visualize within IGBY. So let's jump to the completed history. So here we can see those four files and these bed files we can view. And so we'll kind of get some very simple information from this. The binary file, so this accepted hits one, we can't view directly within Galaxy. It is a, it is a binary file. So what we'll want to do is save this file. So if you go down here to the bottom, the download button, you're going to want to download that data set. And that's going to be the BAM file itself, which will be probably around 10 gigabytes, or it'll, it'll be a large file. And then you're going to want to download the BAM index file, which will be a smaller file, uh, and it'll end in a .bai. And so from there, we can either click right here, and it's going to display that inform, or it'll it'll display this directly in IGBY, or if we switch to IGBY. Let me grab my files. We can go, so Igby starts off with this kind of home view where we have a carousel of many of the um, genomes that we provide. And these, this is a large list, so we should have pretty much everything that there is available. I'm going to select the rice. It should load up here. Okay, and I'm going to simplify this very quickly. And actually, so this is a second annotation that I'm just going to get rid of to simplify the view. Okay, so the primary view in Igby is going to show you this is chromosome one, and it's going to give you um, kind of a, a broad view of that chromosome. And Igby is great because you can really jump and zoom anywhere you want um, very fluidly and get a really good idea for uh, you know, the gene models and everything. And so to load our BAM files that we've downloaded, all we have to do is grab that BAM file. And you'll see here, so we have my BAM file, and I have my BAI, my index file. Make sure that these files are named exactly the same. And then just go ahead and drag and drop that BAM file right into IGBY. Now you'll see what happens is that Igby will not immediately load the entirety of that BAM file. Um, as these files are usually quite large, you know, this one is you know, over 10 gigabytes or, or about there, to try and load that into your memory would most likely overload the system. So what we can do is you can either zoom in on a region of interest and then click load data, or if we had a gene of interest, which I of course happen to have, uh, we can just take a look directly at that. So if we go up here, I'm just going to paste in a region that I thought would be interesting, and then we can go ahead and load that data. And this is our data. So congratulations, we have you know, imported our data, we groomed it, we quality checked it, we trimmed it, and we were able to align it all using Galaxy. Um, and as you saw, there's absolutely no programming involved. It's very, very simple and just a, a great workflow to get through it. And so now that we have this into Igby, we can do some real basic um, and really cool visual stuff with it. So load the data and then we can load the sequence. So now wherever uh, the sequence aligns with the reference sequence, 
it will appear blue, and where it does not appear the same, there'll be these little bars. And then we can change the way this looks. If you click on the track and go down to annotation, we can change things like this stack height. So if I want to view more of my reads, for instance, I can change the stack height to 20 and hit apply. So I can see more of my reads, or I can just optimize that and it'll, it'll show all of the reads. Similarly, let me simplify this more. Let's say we want to do some more kind of advanced analysis visually. We can go to, so click on our track again. We can go to this operations, single track, and we can look at something like our depth graph. So this is going to show us um, the number of reads at any given location. And so it'll, it'll, it'll give us the kind of depth of coverage for our data, which is quite important for looking at RNA-seq data. Similarly, we can come down here, so click on this track, and look at our find junctions. I'll simplify this down. And so this will give us a quantitative analysis of where there are reads that support specific introns. So if you had some form of alternative splicing then, this would give you an indication of where that might be occurring. So it's important uh, to remember that you know once we have our aligned BAM files from Galaxy, we really can do a lot of analysis and visualization within IGBY. And the last thing I wanted to touch on let me get rid of these graphs. Is what I was talking about previously when it comes to changing those top hat settings. And so the first time I ran this, I ran um, top hat using just the default parameters. And so I thought it might be fun to show you exactly what that looks like. So these are the two files are exactly the same, or the the two input files but the alignment files that I get out of it are going to be quite different due to using the different default parameters. So if I jump to a new region, and then I'm going to go ahead and load this data in. And what you can see here is when this is our sample where we limited the intron length to 3000, that uh, you know, so these reads right here map to this specific region, whereas when we allowed those reads to be uh, have intron lengths of 500,000, these reads were mapped as being split, and it thinks that there is an intron that covers this huge space that just kind of keeps going and going. So I just thought that was a really important example um, to just make sure that when you are running these analysis through through Galaxy, that you you cannot necessarily just use the default settings for everything. It's important to you know either follow um, someone else's paper who's who's you know really kind of optimized it or to optimize it yourself to get the best results. So. That's actually everything for today's tutorial. Um, in summary, we successfully you know, imported that data, we groomed it, we quality checked it, we trimmed it, uh, went through the complete alignment process for our paired end data, and then finally we did a quick visualization of that RNA-seq data. So we've really come from start to finish. Uh, and this is work that would normally be quite difficult for someone without programming or bioinformatics experience, but really thanks to Galaxy and IGBY, we can quickly and easily carry out uh, you know, your own next generation alignment, visualization, and analysis. So these tools are becoming much, much easier to use. We're, we're much more integrated now. And so thank you very much. Thank you for joining us.